Oh, hey, Cotton, I've got a favor to ask. Sure, what is it, Bahari? Can you uh, investigate the curios? I excuse me? You know, like research. Haven't I been doing that already for the last month? Well, yes, but actually no. So you want me to uh, do the exact same thing, but not quite. And why would I do that exactly? So you can have more skills? Well, why didn't you say so? Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, we finally have reached the release of title update one for Sunbreak and, well, to put it lightly, it's sort of massive, absolutely game-changing. On a surface level, it's just more of what we've been doing, right? A lot of monsters added, go hunt afflicted monsters as well, get their materials, jobs are good'n, but it's actually way more than that, specifically because of all of the curious crafting mechanics that have been added. Anyone who played Iceborne will recognize this as a bit of a mix of the weapon augment system and the Safi Jeeva weapons, which could roll random upgrades to increase their individual power at the cost of materials that you got from farming the monster on repeat. In Sunbreak, this works quite a bit differently, but on the same principles. There is curious crafting both for weapons and armor, and they work differently from each other. They use different materials generally, but they all go towards the same goal. They make you stronger in customizable personal ways. As far as the materials required, these are all generated from anomaly investigations. Some of them can be acquired from regular anomaly quests, but if you want to take advantage of the whole system, then you want to focus on the investigations to get everything. Especially as doing anomaly investigations increases your anomaly research level and gives you access to higher level anomaly investigations, which not only gives you more of the same rewards, but also unlock new levels of rewards. That was a lot of words that you may not be too familiar with, but the simple way to explain it is to show you the unlocks for the weapon augments. The required crafting materials are different to what you are used to. Things like afflicted dragon blood you will start to get from afflicted investigations above level 30. You need this to unlock your fourth augment slot. Afflicted Dire Scale comes even later and required for the fifth slot. The augments themselves require advanced versions of anomaly parts that come from fighting higher level versions of anomaly monsters. Afflicted Hard Bone comes from higher level versions of the monsters that give you anomaly bones. So on and so forth. In fact, you can't even unlock augmenting on armor for rarity 10 pieces until you've reached the final tier of currently available anomaly investigations, which, as you may have guessed, is a whole new tier from what we had before, including things like Tigrex and Diablos. As such, we have a few reasons for doing this system then. One, it's just a pure power upgrade for your character. Doing it won't lose you anything unless you choose to lose it. You always have the option to not accept a new augment and stay where you are. The investigations get slightly more difficult as you go, mostly just the amount of health that the monsters have. And when you reach higher investigation levels, you not only get better augmenting materials, but also unlock entirely new anomaly targets that you just can't fight without using this system. Valuable, huh? As far as how to use this system, every piece of armor or weapon will need unlocking first before you can actually mess with it. For weapons, this requires regular afflicted materials to reach a point threshold, and for armor pieces, this requires essence, the new material gained from the investigations. Higher rarity armor pieces will require higher rarity essence, and the rarity of essence that you get from an anomaly investigation is generally tied to the level of the monster. Once you have essence and your piece is unlocked, your weapon has a few avenues to power gain. To begin with, you will have three anomaly slots unlocked, but you can add up to two more in exchange for materials that you gain from hunting monsters and anomaly investigations, requiring higher level investigations to fully open up the slots. As for the individual upgrades, these require the same general materials, so if you want to use this system, you really do have to just do loads and loads of investigations to make the most of it, and the options are generally quite simple, yet good. Attack boost takes up two slots for five raw added to your weapon. You can also do an upgraded attack boost for ten raw that takes up four slots instead. Affinity boost takes takes up three slots in exchange for 5% affinity. Element boost has three different ranks, costing one slot for three bonus element, two slots for six bonus element, or three slots for nine bonus element. Sharpness upgrade is three slots for plus 10 sharpness, which is essentially one level of handicraft. And then finally, there is the rampage slot upgrade, which increases the size of your rampage slot by one in exchange for four anomaly slots taken up. The ideal usage of these slots entirely depends on the weapon you are upgrading. The rampage slot upgrade allows weapons that previously weren't in consideration to get much better, as generally speaking, the minimum requirement for an ideal weapon is to have a level 2 rampage slot to fit in the various anti-dragon equivalent decorations to give you 5% bonus damage against the majority of monsters in the game. So with this, any weapons that had great stats, but only a rampage 1 slot can once again be considered. As well, for elemental builds, this means that the weapons that have extremely high element, but only a rampage 2 slot, can now have a rampage 3 slot to fit in Elembane, which is of 
of course, a 20% element bonus when hitting a body part weak to that element. So this is actually massive for element builds, which sort of works with the fact that we have five anomaly slots on a weapon total, rampage upgrade takes four of them, and then the only slot upgrade that costs one slot is an element upgrade, so that works out pretty well. If you're using a raw attack weapon, your ideal combination is more than likely to mix one attack and one affinity for plus five raw and plus five percent affinity, as 10 hits of sharpness is unlikely to make a massive amount of difference unless you're using an incredibly specific weapon, but that decision, of course, is up to you. So many choices. When it comes to the armor crafting, it gets a much more complicated. There's a lot of potential to this system, but also an incredible amount of RNG. Like this part is much closer to just having a whole new talisman system added, but times five. Thankfully, the materials that you use to do the curious armor crafting drop like flies from investigation, so you can generally do multiple attempts for each quest that you complete. However, it will still probably take you an incredibly long time to get an absolutely perfect piece of armor. That said, I have heard tales of people getting things like multiple ranks of crit boost and multiple ranks of weakness exploit, so if you want a reason to engage with this system, that's the one. Obviously, that's just an example of how silly strong you can get from this, but obviously this extends to all kinds of skills, skills with loads of utility as well, also to more niche damage skills like Foray if you want a neat custom status build unlike anyone else's. You can get things to completely change up your playstyle without taking away from your base armor set. That said, this system is fully capable of taking away as well. It seems to have some upper limits on what it can give you as a base, but those limits are broken by also having the ability to take skills off of your armor piece. If your armor piece loses one of its natural skills, its base skills, it then has the ability to have even more skills added on than it otherwise would as well. It's a really weird calculation going on, but essentially, if you get lucky enough, every one of your five armor pieces can have multiple ranks of even two different skills you consider valuable yourself, because it's entirely your choice. You can augment the pieces that you want to augment, keep the upgrades that you want to keep, and discard the rest. You can go for the world's craziest damage build with every offensive skill physically possible, or the world's comfiest utility build that can never be struck down. The beauty of this system is you actually get to choose. The terrifying part of it, though, is the incredible amount of RNG. A lot of people have their complaints about the talisman system and how it works, and, well, this is essentially turning every piece of armor in the game into a re-rollable talisman. It adds to the end game a ridiculous amount, it gives you a near endless goal and a damn good reason to do these investigations, but if you are expecting to have a 100% perfect set anytime soon, I would taper those expectations backwards just a little bit. It will take a lot of time and materials, but as you can see, even the incremental upgrades are significantly worth it. Even getting an extra two slot on an armor piece can give you a whole new skill in your build that you wouldn't have otherwise had. So while yes, it will be very hard to get a perfect armor piece, not to mention five, it is undeniable that everyone should be making use of the investigation system and everyone should be making use of curious crafting because even these small upgrades can have big impacts compared to what your set was previously. Imagine if every one of your pieces gains a two-slot decoration. That's five skills, and that's not an incredibly rare role to get either. The biggest impact that this is going to have on set building in general, in the past, the community has come together to share sets with each other all the time. And well, as of right now, sets have become incredibly personal. It's a lot harder to share your set. It's easy to give a base template, a simple concept of what to look for and a priority list of skills, but from this point forward, every armor piece for each person will be a bit different, and that changes things a lot. We've also been told by the game itself that lower rarity armor pieces have a higher potential for change, and while this doesn't seem to have a massive difference so far, soon enough I'm sure people will look deeper into the files of the game and we will know all of the details, all of the limits, all of the pools of skills and, and changes that are possible, all the ins and outs of what can be done through Curious Crafting. But for now, I think we can very safely say this system is worth pursuing, and this is how you do it. How do you feel about Curious Crafting yourself? Is it a positive addition to the game? or do you want to see less RNG in the series and the end game? Like if you like the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye